Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My talk today is titled Effect of the Surrounding Grassland and Pine Plantation on Natural, uh, on natural Forest Arthropod Assemblages Within KwaZulu Natal Timber Production Areas. Now, why natural forests are so important? Natural forests are considered a conservation priority for many terrestrial plant and animal species. They have high biodiversity value. As a result, many of them are found within the protected areas. Natural forests occur in areas with high rainfall, and globally, they support more than 50% of the known terrestrial plants and animal species. However, in our country, they cover a very small area, which is approximately 0.56%. Now, how is the status of these natural forests in our country? They are highly fragmented, and many of them occur in perches that are less than one kilometer square. And in KwaZulu-Natal, this province where our study took place, they cover an area that is approximately 1.05%. Yet, KwaZulu-Natal is the province that still contains the highest percentage of South Africa's natural forests. And these natural forests are either surrounded by grassland or exotic plantations. Now, how does the matrix affect these natural forests, with the matrix being the most dominant vegetation surrounding the patch? In this case, the matrix becomes the grassland as well as the pine plantation. Grassland have been found to provide a suitable habitat for certain arthropod species, whereas pine plantation changes the ecosystem structure and it influences soil properties <coughs> such as soil acidity, fertility, and forest floor turnover. Pine plantations also replaces natural, replaces natural forests, which then leads to the complete absence or reduction of some arthropod species that are adapted only to survive in natural forests. Now, why should we conserve arthropods? Arthropods are an important component of forest, biodiver of forest biodiversity. They occupy all areas from soil to canopy level, they play an important role in many ecosystem processes such as nutrient cycling. They also serve as the main food source for a number of vertebrates. They are good indicators of habitat heterogeneity and ecosystem diversity because they depend on resources available within their habitat. So the minute the habitat changes, they are negatively affected. My talk today is an entity of, under the umbrella of my PhD project which is aiming at determining arthropod diversity value of natural forest patches in timber production landscape. And the project itself has got four chapters. The first chapter being the effect of the metrics on natural forest assemblages. Second one being the effect of patch size, patch isolation on natural forest arthropod, response of arthropod functional yields to forest patch size, isolation, and the metrics. And the last chapter is do pine, do pine plantations provide an alternative habitat for forest specialists? I'm giving you this outline so that you can have a picture of where my talk is coming from. The focus of today's talk is on the first chapter, which is the effect of the metrics on natural forest arthropod assemblages. And the objectives of this, of this talk are to determine how the surrounding metrics influences natural forest assemblages and to establish the significance of major environmental variables in shaping arthropod assemblages. The study took place in this province where we worked in two estates, Good Hope as well as Bainsford Estate. We selected a total of 20 sites, 10 were natural forests adjacent to grassland, and another 10 were natural forests adjacent to pine plantation. To try and zoom in so that you can see how my sites look like, I had sites that were natural forests adjacent to pine plantation, as well as sites that were natural forests adjacent to grassland. Um, in each of those 20 sites, we had four stations, you can look at my diagram below. We had two stations in the matrix as well as two stations in the natural forest. One was five meters from the edge into the natural forest, five meters from the edge into the matrix, and the last two were, five me were 50 meters from the edge into the matrix and 50 meters from the edge into the natural forest. And all of my sites were visited two times, January 2014 as well as May 2014. We used two sampling techniques. We had pitfall traps as well as active searches. At each station, we had four pitfall traps that were set out and left, in, and left in the field open for a period of five days. Those pitfall traps were quite filled with 50% 50, 50 of ethylene glycol. And then with active searches, at, e at each station, we established a 50-meter transit that was parallel to the forest edge, and we, had, we did 20 minutes of active searching. We also measured environmental variables at each station. Our environmental variables included 
ambient air temperature, surface temperature, light intensity, leaf litter deposition, and we also counted the number of logs. Now, the arthropods we collected belong to family Formicidae, order Coleoptera, order Mesostema, order Scorpionus, order Platodia, class the Propoda, as well as order Arani. But with the results that I'm going to present to you now, order Arani doesn't form part of that it's because it's still in the identification stage. So we collected a total of 4,435 specimens, and within that total of specimens, we order Hemenoptera contributed the highest percentage of that, while Scorpionus contributed the lowest. And those specimens were further sorted into 175 morpho species, and then individuals of order Hemenoptera, Scorpionus, and Coleoptera were further identified into family, subfamily, and genus level were possible. And order Coleoptera, order Coleoptera had the highest species richness, while Scorpionus had the lowest species richness. We performed the U test to test the effect of seasons on arthropod species richness, and the test indicates significant differences. Now, we wanted to see what happens in each of our landscape types. We had four landscape types. We performed the same test for all of our, in each of our landscape types, and we found significant differences. And then we performed the same test again to test the effect of seasons on abundance, and we found significant differences. But in this case, in this time when we performed the test per landscape type, we found significant differences in only three landscape types. But with the pine blocks, we didn't find any significant differences. Now we think that one of the reasons why there was no significant differences in the pine block could be because pine blocks uh, are known to support generalist as well as exotic species. And those species are able to adapt in a variety of habitats. And high species richness as well as abundance that was found in summer when compared to winter could be due to warm temperatures provide warm temperatures that result in increased um, food availability and therefore allow arthropods to expand their home, their ranges. And then we also performed the chi-square test which, which to test the effect of site stations on species richness and the test indicated no significant differences. But if you can look on, on this graph on my left, I've got grassland transit and then on my right I have pine blocks. We found the highest species richness in, in, the, in the natural forest edge that is adjacent to grassland, that, and then it was followed by the natural forest edge adjacent to grassland, but that was in the interior, and the lowest was observed in pine plantation interior. And we also performed the same test to test the effect of abundance on site stations, and we found no significant differences, but we found highest species abundance in grassland stations and the lowest was, uh, was found in natural forest adjacent to pine plantation. Now, we think one of the reasons why we found high species richness in natural forest edges could be because we found natural forest specialists as well as generalist species, species within the habitat. And we found generalist species in that habitat because edge habitats tends to have environmental conditions that are similar to the metrics, which therefore caters for generally species. And then, high species richness in natural forest interior that was adjacent, uh, adjacent to grassland could be because of the positive correlation between, nat between plant diversity as well as arthropod diversity. Also, arthropod association into a habitat is mostly plant species specific, and that is usually found in natural forests because natural forests are characterized with high plant quality, high microclimate, leaf litter deposition, plant height, plant diversity, and plant structure. And one of the measured, of, of the measured environmental variables, which was leaf litter deposition, we found high levels in natural forests. And leaf litter deposition, deep leaf litter deposition is known to offer increased resources for arthropods. And then low, species, low arthropod diversity that was found in pine, plant, in pine plantation blocks could be because of the habitat being unfavorable for, for forest specialists, as it was once indicated that arthropods share little or no evolutionary history with alien plants. Therefore, arthropods may not be able to use these plants for food. And then we also tested the effect of the landscape type on arthropod assemblages, where we used PEMANOVA, and PEMANOVA main test indicated significant differences among all four landscape elements. Now, because there were significant differences, we wanted to see which landscape is different from which one. We performed the pairwise test, which indicated significant, significant differences between all of our pairs. But 
significant differences between natural forest adjacent to grassland as well as natural forest adjacent to pine plantation were very weak when you compare with the other pairs. Then we also performed canonical analysis of principal coordinates, which indicated the results that are similar to the results indicated by PyManova. And here, where I have my circle, the light color represents the pine plantation, and the red one, it represents the natural forest adjacent to pine plantation. We found a very soft edge between these two landscape elements, with, natural, with generally species moving from pine plantation into the natural forest. Whereas with the, with the grassland, as well as natural forest adjacent to grassland, we found a very hard edge between those two. There's a clear gap when you compare it with the other two landscape types. And then with the natural forest interior, the ones adjacent to grassland and the ones adjacent to pine plantation, they were all clustered together, which therefore means that the natu natural forest interior are similar regardless of the metric style. But however, PEMANOVA indicated significant differences between natural forest adjacent to pine plantation and natural forest adjacent to grassland. We think those differences could be due to natural forest species turnover as well as in influences from the metrics. Now, we think that habitat and landscape connectivity in the form of corridors can mitigate the influences of the metrics on forest biodiversity. We choose this type of connectivity because natural forest arthropods have, have, have poor dispersal abilities. Now, our findings are contrary to the findings that have been reported by my supervisors that found no significant differences <laughs> in dung beetle assemblages between natural forests adjacent to pine plantation and those adjacent to grassland. But the difference between their study and my study is that our, the current study is a more, is more extensive multi-texting multi study, which indicates that the more sessile arthropods we studied are more sensitive than the dung beetles. So to conclude, we think that in order to conserve natural forests effectively, the surrounding metrics need to be incorporated within the conservation plan because it does affect um, natural forest biodiversity. And things like formation of corridors between the metrics as well as the natural forest can play a vital role towards forest biodiversity. Lastly, different arthropod groups respond differently to disturbances. Thank you.